Hey everyone, it's Mark Ferguson with Invest For More. I'm back with another video. Uh, today, I'm gonna to talk about FHA 40-year mortgages. These have been in the news on social media a lot lately because of FHA's recent decision about these 40-year mortgages, but there's also a lot of misinformation out there about them as well, as you can see from this article I'm on right here. So I'm gonna talk about the 40-year mortgage that FHA sort of introduced, but not really. And we'll talk about some other 40-year mortgage options and if a 40-year mortgage is really good or bad based on the comparison to a 30-year mortgage or 15-year mortgage. Of course, I love the likes, comments, shares, love seeing new subscribers as well. I do advice videos like this as well as show my own properties. I've got about 20-some commercial rental properties, residential rental properties, flips, businesses, different things we have going on, and lots of drama that tends to follow those around as well. All right, so first off, what is really going on with the FHA 40-year mortgage. Well, first off, a 40-year mortgage basically means you have 40 years to pay it off. So your amortization schedule, which determines how fast you pay off a loan, is going to take 40 years. So it will cost you more money, take longer to pay it off, but that's not always a bad thing, and I'll talk about that later. Most loans are 30-year loans, or also 15-year loans, and yes, 15-year loans technically they usually have lower interest rate you might pay less in interest over time but you're also spending way more money to pay it off way earlier so we'll talk about some of that here in a little bit but first off a lot of people are saying the 40-year mortgage was approved by fha for new purchases that is not true as you can see in this article from housing wire misinformation about the fha mortgage modification spreads on tiktok not just tiktok facebook um, instagram all over the place and a lot of people are saying the 40-year mortgage was approved for new home buyers. That is not the case. It has only been approved for loan modifications on loans that are in default or close to default or buyers who are in severe distress. So you can't just go to FHA, buy a new house, and get a 40-year mortgage. You can't take a house you already own, refinance into an FHA mortgage, and get a 40-year mortgage. This is for people who are defaulting on their loan, doing a loan modification, who are in serious trouble of, you know, can't make their payments. And this option allows them to pretty much modify the loan, extend the loan period, which lowers their payment, might allow them to be able to keep their home and keep making payments because the payments are lower than a 30-year mortgage. So first off, you can't go out here and get an FHA 40-year mortgage. That's not possible um, unless you're in serious default. And I wouldn't suggest going into default to be able to get this modification. So um, that's the first thing. Could 40-year mortgages come about from FHA in the future? Maybe. Um, it's possible, but they've never had them before. So it's hard to say they'll have them now. Now, having said that, there are other countries who have 40-year, 50-year, even 60-year mortgages. So I believe it's France and Spain have 50-year mortgages. I think it's Finland has a 60-year mortgage um, where they push that loan out way down to the future. Now, a lot of people say, that's horrible. You'll pay so much more interest. Um, you'll never be able to pay off the home. And that is all true. However, due to inflation, the time value of money, pushing off all the co costs of a loan 50 years into the future isn't always a bad thing. And the truth is the vast majority of people who take out a loan will never own the home long enough to pay it off anyway, whether it's a 15 year loan, 30 year loan, or 50 year loan, most people sell their home within the first seven years of owning it and they're not paying off their mortgage. So in that case, it's really not that advantageous to you know get the shortest term loan if you're only gonna stay in the home for seven years. And one of the reasons I say that isn't just because you're selling a home, but because of inflation, especially right now with high inflation, money now is gonna be worth more than later on in the future. And the higher inflation is, the less money will be worth in the future. So if you're paying more now on like a 15 year loan and you pay less in the future because you pay off the loan, that's actually a bad thing if inflation is really high because you're paying more now when money is worth more and you're paying less in the future when money is worth less. But if you have a 30 or 40 year loan, and you pay much less now, that's actually a wiser financial situation given all of the things are equal because you're spending less money now 
when money's worth more, and you're spending more money in the future when money's worth less. So if you're trying to get the maximum financial returns, it's better to pay money later on than now because of inflation. Now, of course, interest rates can be different on loans. Um, there can be other situations, other variables that come into play. So it's not always you know, a one size fits all strategy to pay all your money off later on. But as far as inflation goes, it is actually better to pay money off later on. Now, a lot of people say you'll pay more interest. That's true, you do pay more interest but you're paying that money way, way, way down in the future. Um, the break even point between a 15 year and a 30 year loan for money paid into the loan. So the payments you make over time is about 22 to 25 years, depending on the interest rate. And a lot of people say, that's crazy. You pay off the loan in 15 years. How can, be, how can the break even point be 22 years? Because you pay so much more money into the 15 year loan because your payments are so much higher. It takes that long before the two even out and you pay the same amount into both loans. And then really another factor is if you're an investor, if you can invest that money and get a high rate of return, it's much better to take the longer term loan, have lower payments now, take that extra money and invest it in something that will grow with inflation. All right. So I took longer on that than I wanted to. But having said all that, I did a, just a quick search. I have no affiliation to this bank. I have no idea if they're legitimate, a good bank or um, awesome or horrible but I did a quick search and there are 40 year mortgages available according to this bank. So if you are looking for a 40 year mortgage, you may have options. They're FDIC member. Um, they have the terms here listed like they're supposed to. It's not FHA, right? This isn't an FHA loan, but this bank, and I found some other search results as well, have an option for a 40 year mortgage. So if you really want a 40 year mortgage, there are some options. Now, this is an adjustable rate mortgage, which means it can adjust every five years. So if you're, if interest rates do go up, the rate on this loan can go up after five years. Um, I think it, what's it say? It can go up a maximum of 2% every adjustment period and a maximum of 5% over the, the life of the loan. But your payments will be much lower on this because it's a 40 year loan and not a 30 year loan. So if you really are looking for um, longer term loans to push your payment down, there are options out there. And it is interesting too, because they show their rates. I don't know if you can read all of this, depending on what your viewing device is, but, um, as of April 3rd, 2023, which is about a week ago, um, this is for a home valued at 809,000, a $647,000 loan. I believe that's 20% down, uh, your credit score is 740. The interest rate would be 5.625% with an APR of 6.498%. APR is the actual interest rate after closing costs and all the other costs that come into effect. 5.6% um, is just the rate that the loan is amortized on. Um, the payment schedule would be 60 payments or the first five years, because the five, first five years are fixed at 33.98 at an interest rate of 5.65%. And then it just assumes 420 payments at a 37.31 at an interest rate of 6.375. And that's just assuming um, interest rates can go up or down. But at 5.625%, that would be lower than what rates were on average. So because it's an ARM and an adjustable rate mortgage, a lot of times you can get lower rates than a 30 year fixed or maybe a 40 year fixed as well. And technically, if it is a 40 year fixed loan, you will probably have higher rates than a 30 year fixed loan, just like a 15 year um, fixed loan has lower rates than a 30 year fixed loan. And the reason for that is people say banks love 30 year loans. People say banks love 40 year loans because you keep paying them forever. That's the complete opposite. Banks do not like having their money tied up that long. They don't want 30 year loans. They want shorter term loans because they make their money by getting new loans, charging closing costs, sometimes selling those loans and interest rates can fluctuate over that time. So the last thing a bank wants to be is locked into a very low interest rate for a very long time. They don't want that. Um, and that is why interest rates on shorter term loans are often lower than interest rates on longer term loans, because the longer you want to lo lock that term in, it's really the less risk to you and more risk to the bank. And that's why the interest rate is higher on those loans. So um, does FHA have a 40 year loan option. Yes, but it's only for modifications. 
Is a 40 year old, a 40 year loan horrible? Not really, depending on how you use it. If you're an investor, if your focus is on cash flow, your focus is on investing now, um, getting debt now and paying as little on it as possible until later on, especially with high inflation, can be advantageous financially. It's not for everyone. I'm not saying everyone should do this. There are certain situations where it, it's not a good idea, but for some people, it can be a fantastic way to invest in properties. For the everyday homeowner, if a 40, 50 year mortgage allows them to buy a home when they couldn't buy a home before, I think that's a good thing as well too. Statistics show in the United States, 90% of wealth for those who make less than $100,000 a year comes from the house they live in. And homeowners have something like 40 times more net worth than renters. There's no doubt that buying a house is the number one best investment for people who make less than $100,000. And the people who buy a house are way, way, way better off than renters. Statistics have shown that for decades and decades and decades. And that's why these other countries have 40 year loans, 50 year loans, even 60 year loans, because they know it is a massively um, advantageous investment purchase for the general public. And that's why the US has 30 year FHA loans, fixed rate loans, and encourage banks to have 30 year loans as well, because they know having those loans, getting homeowners into properties is very good for them financially. Not every country has 30 year loans. Not every country has 30 year fixed year loans like the US. Canada has, you know, five year arms pretty much where you have to adjust the rate every five years in a time period like this, that can be very devastating to homeowners where interest rates go up. In the US, most of those loans are fixed, although this 40 year loan we're seeing is not. So there's one more thing I wanted to add here in response to a question I keep seeing, and that is if we have 40 year mortgages, will that significantly increase owner occupancy demand, buyer demand, and push prices even higher? And some people are worried about that. Well, my main premise is for pricing real estate, and the reason I think real estate goes up and down for the most part is the cost to build. If the cost to build goes up, people stop building and prices until prices make sense for them to build more, unless there's a complete oversupply situation, which we had after the 2008 crash. There's almost never an oversupply situation where you see significant um, price drops like that. So right now the cost to build has been skyrocketing because labor is going up, because um, ma building materials are going up, utilities are going up, the cost of water, development processes are more and more difficult because cities are making it tougher, states are making it tougher. Everything makes it harder and harder to build. The more expensive it is to build, the higher prices go. Because in reality, if it was easier to build and there's tons of buyer demand, right? If we have these 40 year mortgages and all these buyers come on, they just build more, right? They will, people like to make money. And if builders can build more houses and make more money, they will do it. But they can only do it if people are willing to pay a high enough price where they make a profit. So the harder it is to build, the more expensive it is to build, the higher those prices will go up. And what we saw the last couple of years is the price to build skyrocketed because of building materials, um, you know, moratorium, stopping building, all kinds of different factors. And now interest rates skyrocketing have caused building to drop as well because builders are scared and they're worried about buyer demand. So in the long run, raising interest rates actually makes the housing crisis worse and housing prices go up higher because there's less supply and less housing. What we really want is more housing, more building. We want to make it easier to build to alleviate the stress of not enough houses for the people out there. And this chart right here shows housing inventory for owner occupants versus renters. And a lot of people say investors are buying all the houses and destroying the market. That's not really true. Since 2016, we can shorten this up right here. Um, there's been a million more rental occupied units and 11 million more owner occupied units. Owner occupants have been buying, the owner occupancy rate has been increasing significantly and investors have mostly been selling because this includes new construction. So even with new building, there's only a million more rental units in the last seven years. <laughs> it is pretty crazy to, to, to see that number. And so when you have a 40 year mortgage and it pushes up demand, yes, it might cause more renters to be owners, but you still just have a certain amount of houses, right? Here's your owners, here's your renters. That might push it up like this and make rental demand less, which means rent prices might ease, which doesn't, you know, isn't always a bad thing. 
But if you make it harder and harder for owner occupants and you, you make the demand go down, that means renter numbers go up, right? And there, if the more renters there are, there's not enough rentals out there either. The rent prices are going to go up. And if rent prices go up, eventually housing prices go up. So trying to kill demand will not fix the housing crisis problem because there's not enough houses. People are either going to rent or going to buy. They're going to pay a lot of money either way. The way you fix this problem is by having more supply, more houses being built, and if possible, make it cheaper to build them, which I don't know the government will ever do that, but that would be fantastic. Um, that's how you fix this problem. So 40 year mortgages might cause the, you know, the balance to change a little bit, but it's not going to like all of a sudden make all these people want to live in houses that weren't living in them before they're either going to be renting or buying for the most part. So I don't think adding 40 year mortgages is going to make the housing market any crazier than it is now. And if, if it causes enough demand to come back into the market where people start buying again, it might actually help things because builders will see that say, Hey, we're pretty sure we can sell the houses we build now. Let's go back to building again. Let's not put a halt on it like they have already, which we can show you right here. Here's the new starts for single family homes in the United States. You can see as real, you know, there's some up and downs here in the seventies and eighties, but relatively steady eighties were real steady little drop there in the nineties with the recession and different things. And then we had this big push, 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 and then boom crash, right? We had too much supply. There were 6 million houses for sale in 2006. Now there's 1 million in case you're curious, huge drop. Then we had record low building for many, many years which caused the issue we have now where we don't have enough houses. And we're finally getting back up to almost normal and re realize this whole time the population has been going up. Um, and then boom, interest rates come along and the bottom dropped out of building again. We've kind of flattened out, but still really low because builders are worried they won't be able to sell as many houses. So in the long run, buyer demand dropping causes there to be less houses to build will make the housing crisis worse because there aren't enough houses. If we increase buyer demand, it might actually give builders more confidence. They might start building again, which is what we need. Hopefully that gives you a little bit of background information on the 40 year mortgage, how it can be okay, actually, um, for some instances. And there are actually some available as we can see. And I don't know exactly how good this loan is, how good this bank is. Like I said, I did zero research about them except for a Google search, but they do exist at least in theory, <laughs> in the United States. All right. Thanks for watching. Love the feedback. Love to hear the comments. Love to hear if you have any experience with the 40-year loans or longer as well. Take care. Be back soon.